Bee Swarm Simulator is one of the most iconic Roblox games. Or at least I'm pretty sure it is. I'll be frank, I don't play a whole lot of Roblox games these days, but this, it's absolutely an exception. It's also one of those games I vaguely bring up once or twice, and people go mad when I actually know about it. This has been a historical thing for a while, and I figured, eh, it's a game variety thing, and decided to try and make a video on it. So, yeah, we are doing a Bee Swarm video. But it's certainly... weird. Bee Swarm Simulator is four years old at this point, and yet it still gets some really great player count numbers. Obviously, it just updated at the time of writing, but even before this, it tended to average 30k players or so without an update. And even still, it performs very well. This is quite rare for Roblox games. Often, they tend to die off fairly easily. Bee Swarm just never really did this. Hell, it very rarely does a whole on general. The game infamously can get one update a year, which is especially likely to kill off a Roblox game, yet still, Bee Swarm Simulator remains. And despite this being just a Roblox game, Bee Swarm Simulator did indeed end up with merchandise and the like. I don't know why it does, but it is certainly a huge success and this just proves it further. And I think it's interesting to look into the why, so if you're bored, let's get into it proper. Just to introduce Bee Swarm Simulator properly, it's a Roblox simulator, which generally are very grainy games, where the main goal is grinding and generating a currency, investing in an upgrade, then continuing to grind with an extra benefit. Bee Swarm Simulator itself is mostly inspired by an older game called Snow Shoveling Simulator, which if you go back and play, is fairly obvious to say the least. When compared to most simulator games, the main difference is that Bee Swarm Simulator has a lot more mechanics. Different bees have different abilities, which enter the player produces the main currencies, pollen and honey, basically entirely. There's also a fairly expansive quest system, where the player will have to accomplish a large variety of tasks to get rewards and progress. There's also a ton of systems that I'll go into where and when they're applicable, because, quite frankly, there's some complicated systems to play fairly often. It's definitely part of the incremental game genre, much more than other Roblox games. Okay, so now that the base explanation is over, there are two main things that contribute to a player count. New players coming in, and old players dropping out. You need a steady amount of new players coming in to play and sticking around, and the lowest amount of old players stopping entirely. These are both very different scenarios, and it's quite difficult to get both to happen at the same time. Though I do think Bee Swarm Simulator succeeds here. Well, evidently, because the player count is high, but still. So, we would get started with first, but that'd be too much effort. Conveniently, I don't actually have to. You see, someone already made a video on it. On it. Or, uh, on it. I actually don't say his name. Uh, the guy who makes Bee Swarm Simulator. Yeah, turns out there's something called a Roblox Developers Conference? Which seems like a weird party thing. You know, I don't actually know what it is, but on it released a video of him talking during one, where he talked about making a strong first impression of players. Evidently, you can hear this from his own mouth, and probably should just do that. Link below. Now, you probably won't actually listen to that video, but in a nutshell, the game as a whole shows a lot of endgame mechanics fairly early, encouraging the player to explore and figure out what a lot of things do by themselves. What he didn't cover, however, is keeping players in the game beyond that, like game stuff. This is the sort of thing that keeps Bee Swarm Simulator, well, alive. I mean, hell, a lot of what he covered requires late game players to be in the game to show and teach stuff. It's fairly damn important to keep them in the game, and I think we should cover how this works. So, let's cover the content first. Bee Swarm Simulator is a long game, with a lot of things to do. At any given time, it is likely the player has a solid 3-4 to four different goals they could be working towards. Let's use my current place in the game as an example. But shockingly enough, no. 18 days of playtime is not actually enough to see everything. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anyways, I have to work towards an item called Gummy Boots, which take an absurd amount of materials I have to grind for. I have to level up my bees by spending a ton of honey and treats, and feeding my bees them. I also can grind towards an additional hive slot, which is acquired to get more bees. I can also try to get more mythic bees, which are powerful bees of potent effects. 
And this is only the start of the list. I have a lot of goals I can work towards, and I've already done all the non-repeatable quests that are new. The thing is that this means I have a lot of goals, and in general I can do what I want, which is a fairly compelling style of play. As the game goes on, the player gets more and more decisions to make, each with downsides and upsides that can be the equivalent of hours of play. It's a fun style of play and keeps players engaged, as by this point, the decision making has only slowly increased in importance. In general, there is always something a player can be doing, and mechanics to build towards. Though some of these mechanics are a little sneakier, kinda, than others, which definitely contribute to this. Firstly, I want to talk about mobs and how they work. As the player goes on, loot is fairly important. It's a good way to get some really good items, restock on things that are needed, and just in general it's fairly important to get good amounts of items like extracts, coconuts, sunflower seeds, etc. These mobs, however, have a cooldown on their spawning. Some enemies can take a very long time to reappear, with bosses taking several days quite often. However, no matter what stage of the game you're in, they will do something for you, especially with loot luck increasing throughout the game, and it's one of the key things the game uses to ensure that endgame players stay in the game itself for as long as possible. And if you're familiar with this game, well, this goes a little further than that. Many of the mechanics are similar. To go with the most literal are the planters. These grow very slowly, taking hours to complete, but only grow when you're in the game itself. Therefore, spending time in game is much more valuable, as these planters provide key boosts that is nigh mandatory for gaining a lot of resources, as well as just generally providing other elements. There's a few other things like this too, such as the gingerbread house and beesmas, or the way mechanics like sprouts work, which randomly appear and will go away if a player isn't able to break them in time, or if they just ignore them. Most notable is also Stump Snail, which is basically designed before it AFK. There is no way it can kill you if you stand in the middle, and your bees will attack automatically. It has enough HP, but you're simply not going to kill it in most cases without it taking hours. Heck, the HP even saves between sessions. It's fairly obvious that AFKing is the intended strategy for Subsnail, and it's a way to artificially increase playtime. And increasing playtime means that more players are going to be online at once. Also, from what I know, games with higher player counts are more likely to be recommended to people than games with lower player counts on Roblox, which helps build the loop. Plays being AFK is a fairly weird way to build the amount, and it's certainly not all the players, but it's certainly a noble enough amount, and these mechanics are significant enough to bring up. And then, well, there's also macroing and blue hives. This is something I am not super knowledgeable about, and I will admit that, but from my understanding, in a late game of Beastorm Simulator, there are three wide archetypes of Hive, and one of them, Blue, is very focused on playing the game for a long period of time consecutively, in order to build up long-lasting passive boosts that stack over time. And due to the way Blue Hives tend to work, a lot of players use macros to generate resources, and it's pretty darn effective, surprisingly. There's always just something a lot of players do anyways, and as they aren't banned or bannable, it's certainly yet another source. But I don't think this accounts for more than, say, 500 players at any time. And I certainly doubt any more than 2,000 people I've played in general, though admittedly I could be very wrong. Either way, it's a fairly interesting way to look at it, for myself at least. When combined with time limited mechanics, such as mob respawn rate, or mechanics that activate at set times, such as Puff Shrooms and Mondo Chick, and otherwise, the game is designed to maximize playtime, ensuring that less players can create a higher player account, giving them something to do, a reason to return, and otherwise ensure that they keep playing, which I find fairly interesting and fun to look at from a wider perspective. In many ways, the more that I think about it, the more Beast Home Simulator is really a great example of a lot of modern game design tropes. Obviously, by modern, mostly referring to mobile games and other free games, and I find this game more enjoyable than a lot of these games, though really that might just be nostalgia talking. Beast Storm Simulator as a game means a whole lot to me personally, and honestly, it's just been fun to take a break from my usual stuff to talk about for a while. Don't worry, I'll be going back to my usual stuff soon. I have some announcements I'll be working towards too, so keep an eye out for that. 
If you want to see more videos on games like this, let me know. I like to talk about games in general. And again, it's nice to take a bit of a break. This stuff won't override the channel though. But if you do want me to cover these things more, let me know. Otherwise, this has been Creeps, and have a good one.